Hello, this is Vichual as a chess noob, learning and having fun with chess. So today I'm going to quickly talk about defending against the Ponziani opening as black, but let's have a quick look at what the Ponziani is first from the perspective of white. So e4, e5, knight, uh, knight f3, knight c6 as a response, a very, very common setup. And you know, if uh, if you played bishop to that position, that would be the Italian, bishop to here, that would be the Rui Lopez, or you know, if you played um, d4 right away, that would be the Scotch game. Now the Ponziani is c3. And the idea behind it is, is fairly simple. It's you know, um, giving sort of an extra bit of um, pressure defense to the um, to, to control of the d4 square, uh, basically allowing potentially for d4 the next turn. So let's say the opponent brings out their other knight, d4. Now they can't really capture, and you've got some full control of the center. Now, you know, if they did try to capture, um, you know, that doesn't uh, really work because you'll just end up uh, end up potentially ahead and you've got no queen potentially in the center of the board. Um, alternatively, let's say uh, they opted to play um, a bishop, um, so bishop c5, you can do something very, very similar uh, simply because you just have more pieces. So, you know, they at the end of it, you know, you'll end up sort of winning a piece. So again, they're not going to be able to do that line. So this is basically having extra control on the d4 square with c uh, with c3. Now let's have a look at this from the perspective of black. So I don't play the Ponziani as white, so I would occasionally see the Ponziani as the player with the black pieces. And I just showed a few ways that, you know, white playing Ponziani can potentially get a pretty good position, um, you know, um, after, after the next move. So, uh, and, and this is in fact the case when I look at sort of lead chess database of most of the common moves that you might imagine you would play. So, you know, the other knight, the bishop, maybe playing one of the pawns, white uh, tends to win uh, over half the game. So white is substantially more likely to win than black in sort of the beginner games, beginner intermediate games um, of, of uh, Blitz and Rapid online anyway. However, there is one good move here for black, and this is the move I think to know, which is d5. You have the opportunity to take full control of the center, and it's often good to do so uh, because you know this knight is hemmed in by their own uh, by their own pawn, uh, and you know if they want to capture right away, you can get back with queen. So this is in fact a very good move for black. Let's have a quick look at the review of the game before we move further. There we go with the review. So you know reasonably smooth at the beginning, but then I sort of capture uh, capture the win. Um, D5 last four moves. So if we go back to the top. Here we go. Somewhat more accurate uh, than my opponent, which I was very pleased to see. Uh, they made a couple of errors, which we'll see in context. So let's move back now to the analysis. Now the good thing with d4 is there's not really much more theory to learn as you know as when you're playing uh, playing with black to defend against the position. Pretty much after here, um, just ordinary looking moves are generally pretty good. So if we look at this position here, what's potentially likely to happen? So if they capture, just capture back. There's no problems with that. So that's good. Uh, if they um, do something like they bring their bishop out, here any number of moves are potentially okay. You know, you could uh, develop the other knight, you can, uh, you can push that pawn, they're both potentially okay. Now one potential tricky move is queen to a4 here. And of course that bishop potentially can come as well, but again here um, any sort of number of sort of normal looking moves are okay. You could play bishop to d, uh, bishop to d7, or pawn to uh, pawn to f6. You know, putting an extra defender to that pawn. Both of those are actually fine. So now in the actual game, uh, what happened? Let's pop that back on. I think the opponent captured, which is very normal. Capture back with queen. 
And from this point onwards, I don't necessarily play that accurately. And you know, they they made an inaccuracy themselves. D3. You know, the idea of the Ponziani is that it can potentially sort of open up the lines uh, for the diagonal pieces very very early. Um, and so I can sort of see that logic and why they want to open up that diagonal for the dark square bishop. Though of course I have blocked in their light square bishop now. Uh, here I decide to just develop my my bishop. You know, pin that knight to the to the queen. Um, they play bishop e2, which is fine, I suppose. Uh, here I decide to go, you know, because I don't really know how to play this position. I thought let's just go full aggro now. Now my logic here is, you know, potentially I could win that knight. Uh, if they opt to take, I'm just going to whack their whack their queen. Um, uh, you know, we'll go for a queenless uh, queenless middle game, and then I, I'll castle uh, castle long. Uh, I thought potentially that was that was okay for me. Now Stockfish hates this, but you know I've got a lot more room. Um, I'm sort of developed okay. I thought this was actually okay for me. They counterattack with uh, c4. You know, with an attack on the queen. I thought that was probably not a terrible move, but you know, also potentially not a bad, uh, not necessarily a good move either, because they have now weakened that dark square diagonal to their king. And you know, both my bishop and queen can go there. So, queen first, obviously, get it out of the attack with check. I expected, that, yep, they were going to move their, their bishop. Now that gives me an opportunity to move my bishop, so now to so minus two, things are looking pretty good for me. Um, they sort of make a interesting move. Uh, bishop c3, I saw that and I thought, look, that rook is not doing anything, I'm not going to be scared. Uh, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to long castles, basically pinning that pawn to the queen. So that's what I did. Now Stockfish didn't like it uh, quite so much, it suggested just to cash out uh, and to take that take that knight. I thought I potentially had time um, and you know, I'm still doing well. Like, this is minus th uh, three and a half, that would have been about minus five and a half. Yep, so either way, still good. They now short castles, um, you know, back to minus five. In this position, whack that knight, cash out. They take, whatever. I need to get rid of this because, you know, I don't want to potentially lose this now. Let's get rid of that. There, that's fine. Now take out that uh, that bishop and, yeah, and, and I think that's good. You know, opponent has this sort of weird clump of pawns here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and I thought here I'm potentially doing pretty well. I decided to develop my other knight. Um, Stockfish thought to you know immediately attack the queen would have been good. Yep, and I can, I can see uh, see how that potentially could work. And you know that also potentially provides a uh, you know double attack on that pawn as well. I thought how to develop my other knight first might have been good. Um, they bring out a check, that's fine. Just move the king out of the way. King now is very, very safe behind this palisade of pawns. They now sort of push uh, push a pawn, that's fine. Uh, and here, yep, so that was the move all along. Um, so now double attack on that uh, on that pawn, even better, the queen potentially can get um, get hit by the rook. Now they sort of see that, so they sort of move their queen out of the way. However, there is now a risk. Look at that. So here would be check, which would discover attack on the queen. Now obviously I can't do this right away because the queen would just straight up take the knight. But this is what, this is a trap that I saw. Uh, this, the queen's position there doesn't, you know, uh, that doesn't affect, you know, the, 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 the fact that, you know, I can still take that pawn, so that's what I did. That now also defends that square, so unless the opponent does something, that is going to be a very, very powerful attack next turn. So, you know, they had a number of opportunities here, they could sort of move their king so that that doesn't get checked, um, they could potentially move the queen out of the way, um, they could potentially block, you know, they can potentially block that, um, however, they missed. Uh, they missed that potential tactic, uh, decide to attack that knight, that doesn't matter. Comes with check, discovered attack on the queen. Queen is definitely going to be lost next turn if they opted to capture with, uh, with rook. That doesn't help because that gets defended by the queen. My opponent here sort of saw the writing on the wall uh, and they opted to resign. Good game, GG. There's one big takeaway from this game. The most successful move to play against the Ponziani opening is d5. 
just play ordinary moves after that. I hope you found this video interesting and thanks for watching.